Hi friends, welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And yes, as you saw in the thumbnail, we've got a fixed blade, the uh, KMB Made Knives, that's the company's name. This is their Kissimmee Fixed Blade. Uh, the fixed blade is a follow-up from their folding knife, a liner lock folding knife. The fixed blade version is a little bit bigger length in the blade and uh, maybe you want to learn about it. The uh, folding knife is made with Bowler K110, which is basically a D2 steel. This has got a stainless steel that I really, really like. Those of you who are familiar with me know I really like 14C28N. It's probably the best budget stainless steel on the market these days and has been for, you know, a good handful of years. Uh, I don't know, when, when did they first make it? Back when they were Sandvik? I don't know. But uh, you can look it up, the Alima 14C28N stainless steel. Really, really, really good balance of toughness, edge retention, corrosion resistance, durability, all those things. Really, really good balance of all those three. And uh, it's a budget price knife. Are you interested in a fixed blade like this? They say it's EDC. Well, come on down to the tabletop and I'll tell you all about it. But before we go to the tabletop, if I get this out before the weekend, <laughs> the knife sale that I'm doing, my great big knife sale, I'm trying to raise some funds for some uh, emergency expenses that I have. I'm selling pretty much all my knives. There's, there's about 10 that I'm keeping roughly, something like that. Um, so I got loads of knives for sale. So if you wanna buy some knives, Excuse me, if you're in the market for some knives, maybe you want something that I've had. Most of them are roughly 30% off of retail prices. Some of them are a fair bit more than that. And uh, yeah, check out that list. I'll leave a link in the description down below on uh, to the video that you can watch that intros that sale and uh, or a link straight to the, you know, the sale information. Just please read all the instructions, especially if you've never purchased from me before so you can follow those instructions. A number of people just don't follow those rules and it makes it a whole lot more work for me. Slows down the process, makes it more frustrating for everybody. So if you follow those policies, it will help you, it will help me, it will make the world a happier place. <laughs> now let's get to the tabletop and actually take a look at this Kissimmee. Okay, the first thing you're gonna notice, yes, it comes with a older school style leather sheath. Uh, not very much different from what's been around for a couple hundred years or maybe even longer. Uh, it's just a basic leather sheath. Uh, you can see they didn't spend too much effort making it all the same green. The outside layer is the green and then they've got a welt in between there. That's still sort of a brownish color. It's fairly well made. It's not a great sheath in terms of its quality or anything. We've got your belt loop right here. I don't tend to carry these kinds of knives anytime except for when I'm going out camping. And that's pretty much the only time. But, yep, maybe I would carry this knife. Maybe I wouldn't. I don't know. Let me go find Bandit because he's just barking up a storm again. Yeah, my wife just got home from work, so... Hopefully she'll keep Bandit quiet. <laughs> this knife, yes. Uh, I'll show you some pictures of the folding knife version. It comes with micarta, and like I said, uh, Bowler K110, which is D2. This comes four different ways. Two satin finish versions of uh, 14C28N and two black wash finish. You're going to get both of those in either this white G10 or black G10. That's the only ways it comes. Uh, the designer for this, I'm not sure. CMB Made Knives website is down. Um, I went to the Go Back in History and See websites things, and it looks like their website's been down for an awful long time. And I can't see who the designer is. I did notice one listing, I think it was Bees Blade, said that the designer is Tighouse. I don't know where uh, Bees Blade's got their information from. So... But that's what that logo there is going to be. And right there, it says 14C28N. 
And right there is CMB Made Knives logos. They're nice and small. I do wish since they had all this real estate up in a flat area that they'd put it up there instead of on, you know, the main bevel, you know, like the 14C28N is on that flat area. They could have fit it all up there, I think. Yeah, that doesn't really matter. It's not that big a deal. We got a harpoon style blade, which is this, you know, straight back and then it comes up and then you got the drop point to a tip. It seems weird to me to have a harpoon style blade. What's a harpoon for? It's for puncturing, for piercing, stabbing. But this knife is a bad choice for stabbing because you've got no protection for your hand to stop it from slipping over the handle onto the blade. You know, say, you know, it comes into something solid um, and it hits that something solid and it stops, your hand's gonna wanna keep on going this is not a good choice for stabbing, even though it looks like it's a great choice for stabbing right there. Like that looks like a very stabby tip. I wouldn't suggest it. <laughs> Slicing and cutting on this knife is pretty good. Uh, it's not too thin at the edge. It's right around 20 thou, and I'll give you all the measurements later on. That's about half a millimeter thick behind the uh, apex grind or the sharpening grind. Fairly sharp from the factory, got a pretty good score. Did well in my testing, quite liked it. It's a good knife. It's a good size. It's light. And I'll go through those measurements later on. We've got a nice opening back here for a lanyard, slightly set in. I, I wish they would have taken back a little bit more of that G10, but I carried it without a lanyard. It's more like a steak knife size knife, which is, you know, great for camping. You got an awful lot of uses for a knife this size when you're out and about outside for an extended period of time. Um, let me see, that's just a little bit of schmutz on there because I actually did testing with this knife, so it's a little bit dirty up there. I wiped that off. I quite like it in general. We've got screws right here. Uh, what size are these screws? Let me figure this out here. I haven't checked that out yet. They are not T8. Why not? Where's my T6 driver? Did I bring it upstairs? Because I was having to work on a few knives while I was doing my uh, preparation for the knife sale. They're T6s. I don't like that at all. I don't like a T6. Let's see, I got that one loose. Nice clean screws. Let's take these all off. I might fast forward this bit. So all those screws are nice and clean. There's no thread locker on them. Uh, let's take this uh, G10 off if we can. There we go. So a little bit of skeletonizing here, which I'm totally fine with. That's not a problem. And uh, let's see what we got, how this was constructed. It looks like they put a little bit of, yeah, some oil on there to help it stay in place while they assembled it. I don't want to use something sharp here. There we go. So these are just free spinning pins and they are screw in both side style pins. So we can see that right there. Uh, the steel here is almost exactly an eighth of an inch thick, 14C28N, perfectly strong enough for any normal task that you're gonna do with a knife like this. So yeah, I'll take some still pictures of these parts, put it back together again and keep talking to you. Well, I learned something kind of dumb. As I was trying to put it back together, I, you know, I got two of them in, two of the screws in, and the third one I couldn't get in, and it's because, I don't know if you can see it on these screws, I gotta line them up. You've got two different lengths of screws here. If you can see these two here, you know, there's a space there on this one. It's quite a bit shorter than the other one. And if you try to put two long ones on one side, that's gonna mess up, it's not gonna work. So, yeah, you have to put the shorter ones in and bottom them out on the pin and uh, put them through and then make sure you do that, all three of them, and then put the longer ones in the other side. Why couldn't they just have made one standard size screw that works from both sides? Why? That, that makes no sense. That's just dumb. Now you have to have two different products, two different sizes of screws manufactured for you. If they were both 
of such a middle length between the two, then they could both go all the way in. And you wouldn't have to sort them. You wouldn't have to think about it. That's just dumb. If anybody from CMB is watching, that's dumb. You're just frustrating your customers because of course they're going to take knives apart. Because, you know, sometimes they might have to clean underneath there or something. Uh, frustrations for no good reason. Okay, got it back together. You know, worked really well this time because I sorted those things out. Let's do the sizes, dimensions, all that kind of stuff. First, the weight, 75 grams for the knife. That is 2.65 ounces. 22 grams for the leather. That is 0.77 of an ounce. Together, it's 97 grams, 3.42 ounces. So under three and a half ounces for a three and a half inch fixed blade. And oh, I didn't show how well it goes in and out of the sheath. It's not as well as you'd hope. Uh, see this bump right here for the harpoon blade? You can see it's even a little stressed there. It's just, so as it's going in, it's trying to cut into the welt a little bit. I'm not sure how long that's going to last. I wish they would have made it at least an option that you could get it with a Kydex sheath. Um, but hey, that's what it is. Uh, and that's the weight that you get. Uh, how about some measurements here? The cutting edge length, 85.9 millimeters, 3.38 inches. Blade length tipped to the closest spot on the handle is 88.8 .8 millimeters, three and a half inches, almost on the nose. The thickness of the blade, 3.15 millimeters. That's 0.124, a ten thousandth of an inch under an eighth of an inch. So I'm just calling it an eighth of an inch thick. Pretty good, I like that. The blade depth this way, it's widest here at this harpoon style thing, 21.6 millimeters, 0.85 of an inch. The uh, thickness behind the grind, so just behind the edge, I already told you, it was like 20 thou. It's actually 0.54 millimeters, 20.5 thousandths of an inch. It's a little thicker near the tip than it is back here. So it's more like 20 thou here and 21 thou up here. Yeah, not bad. Gives it a little more strength at the tip. It cuts okay. I wouldn't mind if it was a little bit thinner. For this kind of knife, a little bit thinner, a little more slicey would be even better. The rest of the measurements, handle length, so the G10 length, end to end between my thumbnails, 101.6 millimeters, four inches, almost exactly on the nose. The thickness of the handle, it is slightly rounded. It's not flat slab, it is 3D milled. So right along the middle of the handle, 11.2 millimeters, 0.44 of an inch. The handle depth is widest down here, 20.1 millimeters, 0.791 of an inch. And uh, the grip length, you know, get a little bit of rounding here, but it's all round as well. It's about nine centimeters, just over three and a half inches of handle length. And my hands are just barely into the extra large range. So if your hands are large or smaller, for men's large or smaller, you're going to find this comfortable enough. If you've got men's extra large hands, I think you're going to find this handle a little bit small, at least potentially. Total length of this thing from tip to tail roughly 190 millimeters, 7.48. So seven and a half inches, just tiny bit under seven and a half inches. It's a good size knife. What do I think of this thing? I'm not fond of the sheath. I wouldn't mind something else. I could add a little dangle thing on here. It sits a little high on the waist for, for me, for carrying it the way that it, it carries, just the way that it is from the factory. So, yeah, be prepared for that if that's what you get. It's not a high-end leather. It's fairly soft, so at least it's not all dried out leather. So keep it hydrated, you know, with proper leather conditioner, and it'll last probably a fair bit of time. Sewing job on it, not great. Not great. You can see that it was pulling right here a little bit. So, yeah, not great but it's okay. The knife itself, I'm actually quite liking this. Uh, we might keep this knife and put it into our camping kit. We haven't gone camping an awful lot, you know, since COVID. Uh, wouldn't mind if it was a tiny bit thinner here at the edge. Good steel. G10's comfortable. Fits my hand fairly well. Very useful little EDC knife that doesn't carry super well. Prices of this thing, 
Well, it depends on where you go to buy it. I don't know why. I got this one from White Mountain Knives, but this one's not even listed there anymore. They've just got the other three listed. The black wash ones are listed at 55 US, but the satin with the black handles, for some reason, is listed at $80 US. I'll contact Justin uh, over at White Mountain Knives and ask him if that's intentional or if that's an error or not. Um, you know, it's a small business as well, and so sometimes there's an error in the price, and we'll see. I'm hoping it's 55 as well, because when you take your 10% off with coupon code CCE, that makes it $49.50 US, which is around 68 Canadian. A fixed blade knife like this will import into Canada, no problem at all. I didn't find any stores in Canada that have this knife. Uh, Blades Canada has got the folding version of the Kissimmee, but not the fixed blade version. At least not yet. Hopefully, well, maybe they'll get it, maybe they won't. I didn't miss the jimping on here like I thought I would. Uh, it's not got a super sharp edge here, but it's got a fairly crisp edge. I didn't try it for striking a ferro rod. That's not really what this knife is for, but I think it probably would work. Um, it's a d decent knife. I'm quite happy with it. Don't use it for stabby stabby, because you're gonna cutty cutty, you're handy handy. Oh, shut up, Jake, we're not talking to kids. <laughs> Most of you guys are grown-ups. Actually, some kids do watch this, and that's why I'm so appreciative of you guys in the comment section keeping it clean, and you just do. I thank you for that very, very much, and um, I appreciate it. Good little light EDC knife. Might have to make another sheath for it. Who knows? Or, I just thought of something, or I'll just show you what I thought of. Oh, I hope the audio wasn't too bad because I didn't pin my mic on my shirt. This is what I wanted to show you. I got a bunch of these in various sizes, uh, roughly $2 each. I got them on AliExpress. It's just a piece of plastic, uh, somewhat like Kydex. And you can protect your knives that way. You know, this one's quite a bit longer than it needs to be. I got them in a number of different sizes. And that's if you're going to be packing your knife into like a kit for camping, that's a great way to carry it. It's quite a bit smaller than this, especially if you're not going to use the belt. Uh, I'll leave a link to the AliExpress thing. It's not a referral link or anything. It's just a link to where I got them. I got some of them that have a nice uh, sort of felt in there, especially for the longer ones. The reason I got a bunch of these when I was still doing my knife sharpening, uh, when I was allowed to still do my knife sharpening business, uh, some customers would bring in knives and, you know, I, had a, I might bring them from place to place or something. Um, and that's how I'd protect myself and the knives by putting them in. And now, you know, can't cut, can't stab and hurt myself. So, yeah, you can get these in a wide variety of sizes, different depths, you know, for cooking knives. You know, chef's knives, you might want a greater depth, especially if the knife's got a belly on it. So these are just dirt cheap, and it's a great way to protect the knife uh, without having to uh, have something big. Just an idea if you've never thought of this for some knives. So the Kissimmee. Yeah, happy with the knife, not so happy with the sheath. Do you have one? Did you get the folding knife? Let me know down below. What do you think? Thank you so much for watching. Thank you a lot for those of you who are going to be buying some more of my knives. Especially a huge thank you to those of you who purchased knives from me any time in the past or in this current sale that's going on right now. I'm not sure how long I'm going to keep the sale going. Once I shut down the sale, then I will start another sale where I'm going to be selling off some of my sharpening rigs that I've got extra and some other non-knife related stuff. Like maybe I'll sell off some of these or whatever. Uh, maybe I'll sell off, you know, some tools. Not these. For sure not these. But maybe some tools maybe some other things, uh, stuff that's not actually something with a cutting edge, but that I have that's related to knives. I'll sell some of that stuff as well to try to turn some more money. So you've been really great. Uh, I think three or four of you have given me extra back more than it, the, the price I put down for those knives. You guys are awesome. I'm not gonna embarrass you by giving out your names, but you guys are awesome. I'm, I'm deeply humbled and exceedingly thankful for you guys. I appreciate you an awful lot. 
And remember friends, always cut towards your chum, not your phone.